I'm Kirby Allison, and I consider myself immensely privileged to have traveled extensively while exploring the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. From the preeminent tailoring houses of London Savile Row and the majestic beauty of the Scottish countryside on a traditional driven game shoot, all the way to the rich tobacco fields and cigar factories of Cuba's finest cigar producers. Today, this journey of discovery continues as I set out on a two-week grand tour to explore the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition here in Italy. Italy is, of course, a country steeped in history from the Roman Empire of ancient times through the Renaissance of the 15th and 16th centuries to the modern state that it is today. Its magnificent cities always manage to combine a deep respect for the past with a keen outlook towards the future. But more than anything else, Italy is about the Italian people, always stylish and well-dressed, friendly and forthcoming. On this trip, we shall be meeting up with a wonderful array of celebrated Italian artisans and craftspeople. From bespoke tailors and shoemakers, to a single vineyard winemaker. and even bespoke pin makers. This is truly an experience not to be missed, so I hope you'll join me, Kirby Allison, as we set out for what promises to be a truly extraordinary journey, exploring the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition of this great country. As our grand Italian tour continues, the time has come to venture outside of Florence in search of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. I've rendezvoused with my good friend Michele Casolati, who will be my traveling companion for the rest of the trip through Italy. On what has begun as an exquisite morning, what better way to explore the beautiful Italian countryside than in his vintage Mercedes SL convertible with the top down? We are traveling towards Siena, just a little under 50 miles south of Florence, to Monteroni d'Arbia, to visit the historic Castello San Fabiano, a magnificent 13th century castle owned by Michele's close friend, Benedetto Fiorentini. Operating as an exclusive Airbnb, Benedetto has kindly offered to allow us to stay with him and his family during our time in Tuscany. The property is amazing and I really look forward to hearing him share with us some of the incredible stories about the castle, the local region, and of course, his family's distinguished history, one that has been a part of the fabric of the region for centuries. Hello, my dear friend. Hello. How are you doing? Welcome, good to see you. Thank you so much for having us. Nice to meet you. Hello, hi. Thank you so much, my dear friend Kirby, and uh, welcome. Should run inside. Actually. Yes. Yeah, don't worry about the car. We will have someone parking well, thank it. Thank you so, so much because it's still open. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> let's run it. So welcome to Castello di San Fabiano. Wow. This entrance actually is the modern part of the castle. 
Uh, it was uh, built in the 19th century to transform the fortress of the castle in a residential house. Yeah. Uh, and if we go on with the tour, we will see why this part is modern and how we can recognize the modern parts with the old yeah. ones. When was the house the, originally built? How far is it? The, the, the house was, the, the, fort, the castle was built in 1300. They started, of course. I mean, yeah. yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> yesterday, and then transformed uh, in a major uh, fortress in uh, 1400 with a big tower uh, for signals, chain of messages, and then, uh, and then in just in the 17th century, they start deciding to transform it in a private house, like a residence. Private residence. Yeah. Uh, because this was mainly a hunting and agriculture area. Yeah. And the owners use, have lots of properties around, and only uh, in that time they decided to trans start transforming the fortress in a residential. Yeah. So originally it would have been an actual military fortress to help protect the area? Uh, to, yeah, it's a little different, not really to protect uh, not military. This was built to defend the merchants going, leading to the big granary of Kuna to okay. get the wheat or the flare. And in case of bad weather, in case of the river floating outside his bed, and they had to stop for two or three days waiting for better, better condition weather. to go over there. And so they were settled inside the castle. Uh, and saved by bandits because this is a very was a very famous area of bandits. I agree that it was because I left my car outside here, <laughs> so I don't want to lose it. It was, it, it was. was, it was. But it has been also in a in a more recent period uh, between 1975 and 1990, uh, bandits that were kidnapping us. So we were supposed to sleep with a gun under the bed and have a life that wasn't really very relaxing. But this luckily ended. Yeah. And when did your family then come? They, the my castle? father came here in, uh, in, uh, in the 50s because during the war he was officer in cavalry with the Marquis Forteguerri Bicchi Ruspoli. Uh, and then after the war, uh, my father was looking for a hunting place for public uh, relations. Yeah, to, entertaining. Uh, and uh, the Marquis uh, called him and said, there's this place that was of my family, why don't you buy it? So we are neighbor also during the peace, not only during the war. And, and so uh, actually my father was looking, because we are Roman, we come from Rome, so he was looking for something near us to Rome. Okay. Uh, but my mother fell in love with San Fabiano, and that was it. You know, when, <laughs> when, when your wife decided, speaks, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, if you can keep her happy resist. so that you may yeah. hunt. Right, yeah, right, and right, at the time it. I would say it was more complicated because <laughs> apparently happiness was major in terms of castles. Here. Castles, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so this is. Let me uh, lead you in yeah. so that we can also see all the transformation has been made for the fortress in a residence. Let me show you the flag with the family crest and the Italian flag. And uh, also notice the steps in travertine marble, each step one piece, not bad. Then we get in the corridor. We are here you have an example of what is the Senese tradition, because this, are, this chair reports the uh, colors of a contrada. You know, Siena is divided in 17 contrade. This is the Contrada de la Torre, that won in 1961, also thanks to the money that my father yeah. gave to the captain of the Contrada, uh, the uh, Marquise Kijitson Dadari, Michatelli, and she won the Palio. And so this for gratefully, thanks, yeah. uh, it was so given so all the a token colors. of gratitude. And I have a, also a beautiful flag that I will probably show you later. And then here we have a, a gallery, photo family gallery that is very 
uh, little but significative of uh, my family. This is my father getting a prize after a fox hunting in Rome. Oh, really? Yeah. And the prize is given by Princess Elizabeth. She was not queen yet, and the Count Campello uh, also observing. Yeah. So what was the significance of the Count? I mean, in the in the hierarchy of, of the social life in Rome? Uh, the, 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 well, a count in the social life after the war was just, uh, how can I say? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or a fancy invitation for dinner. Yeah, a fancy invitation for dinner, yes. My family is much older than the title. Okay. Uh, um, we come from north of Italy, so it's uh, totally... Also, if the, our surname is typical of of a family that comes from Tuscany, because Fiorentini are the uh, people who live in Florence. Mm -hmm. you know? But at the, in the medieval time, Fiorentini were all the people who lived in a big part of Tuscany, not in Siena Republic, but in big part of the rest of Tuscany was uh, under Florence uh, influence. So, uh, and they became nobles in uh, 1641 for the Austrian Asburgic prince Ferdinando d'Asburgo. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a totally different kind of, of uh, title. Yeah. Then my father became count much later. Uh, this is my mother with Hemingway, Adriana Ivancic, uh, uh, in Cortina d'Ampezzo on the Dolomites, mm -hmm. where my grandmother had a house, uh, Baita, uh, one of the first private houses not of local built in Cortina really? after yeah after the first world war uh, this other picture here you have Marconi Guglielmo Marconi the uh, inventor of the radio waves uh, with my mother-in-law and all her sisters and some cousins <laughs> on the boat Elettra on the boat of Guglielmo Marconi, where he used it as a laboratory for all his experiments. Mm. The last photo is that is my father ready to leave for the French border from Bra. He's holding the flag, is the one on the horse holding the flag. And the first person you see uh, very tall is Prince Umberto di Savoia, who became then for a short time king of Italy. Mm. Uh, greeting the, the soldiers leaving for the border. Yeah, this was World War II. World War II, yes. This was in 1940. Wow. So the family has a long history dating back, I guess, in, in recent history to Rome, yeah. before uh, um, then acquiring the house as a hunting lodge, and then ultimately, you know, you coming here. We, we decided to come here, uh, my father decided to move here uh, only for a reason of, uh, as I, I think I told before, her public relations uh, um, in, in the sense he, um, he became with his very lucky uh, position because uh, when Italy uh, decided to change the allies and came back to the English, American and all the allies, uh, the Germans were not very kind with Italian officers. Okay. So they had to leave the border and the soldiers and escape. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were both, my father and the Marquise Forteguerri, who still is having a property nearby. Uh, my father went to Rome and there, it's a long story because my, in the meanwhile, my grandfather was uh, had um, given to the Vatican machines to make a hole in the basilica walls of St. Peter uh, so that the Pope uh, Pio XII, who suffered of gold, uh, um, could reach the tomb of St. Peter without doing those beautiful stairs from the basilica to go down in the crypta. Mm -hmm. Um, and this hall was very dangerous uh, to do because it was in the hall of the basilica with all the frescoes and statues and everything. So the machines had to be quite working softly. Yeah. <laughs> softly. Delicate. And, and my <laughs> grandfather gave those machines and asked if his only son could look after them, as it was also my father an engineer, just as an excuse to keeping away from the war. Okay. 
at, at the beginning, my father went to the border with, with the soldiers, but then after... He was recalled. Uh, he was <laughs> coming back. He preferred to go to the Vatican and be protected by becoming um, uh, what was, we can traduce in English as secret waiter of the Pope. Okay. It was a group of 20, 24 young gentlemen who were uh, welcoming 24 hours a day guests coming to speak to the Pope, uh, but not officially. Because officially there was all the protocol law with the cardinals and everything. When it wasn't official, uh, and so what they needed was young, uh, multilingual, uh, young noble person who could uh, welcome and entertain the guests till the Pope was ready. The gentleman that understood the protocol. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> protocol, yeah. And he was inside this till 1948 or 50. I don't remember exactly. Uh, and so he was saved by the war in this sense. Uh, Great grandfather, uh, who was called by um, the Prime Minister Giolitti to Rome because he was having a um, career of prefect. Tizia, how you say, prefect? Uh, interior, public officer, uh, I would say. Pub, yeah, yeah, public officer. Mm -hmm. So he was called to Rome from Belluno, uh, and so he reached Rome and settled in, in Rome. His son, my grandfather, opened a um, factory of uh, machines for uh, building a fair and uh, earth moving. Okay. Uh, because during the First World War, he worked with the American officers uh, to um, prepare all the needs we had during the war that the Americans would lead us. Okay. Uh, especially uh, earth-moving machine like um, excavators. Yeah, so like the Corps of Engineers. After when Mussolini said, stop for the income of all this material from a side, we must be able to produce our own. He produced the first Italian excavator. And so he had a company that was doing this. Unfortunately, for mistake, was bombed in uh, March. Yeah, in in, in March uh, 1944, uh, 180 uh, employer died, and he died two months and a half after of yeah. heart attack. Wow. Uh, and so my father was 29 years old and uh, decided to try to go on with this adventure, but everything was bombed. So it was all the money were there. So it was not easy. Strangely, he uh, has his main interest when he was young was horses and women. And in Rome, there's a very important community. There was, and it, there's still now a very important community of families, Russian families with beautiful daughters. daughters. Uh, Some things learned, don't change. He exactly. learned, sure. Rich, beautiful daughters. <laughs> no, rich, I don't know, but you're sure because they had to accept. Yeah, but ex we, we just care about the fact that they were beautiful. 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 Yeah. That's yeah. important for me. If I was that the important thing. And so he learned a little Russian so that he could, you know, in some ways go to the Hotel de Russie in the dancing, uh, 5, uh, 5 p.m. dancing tea. Uh, and have the you know the the capability of speaking some words in Russian, yeah. uh, so entertain the young ladies, and this uh, was uh, I say was an opportunity after the war for my father to sign in 1946 a very big contract with the Soviets, mm. uh, leading a lot of excavators to build the. Uh, pipeline from Siberia to Moscow and then from Moscow to Europe. Mm. And this has been a big business for him so that he could uh, re, re, uh, rebuild, yeah. regenerate all the, the so company. This is, this is the, the, the example that chasing beautiful women is also can benefit your can, career. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. The Vatican uh, could not have an ambassador of the Soviets because they were but there was a man doing, connecting this, the Vatican with the Soviet amb embassy in Rome. Ah. And he met my father, so this is... No, sono stato sintetico. Okay, this is our dining room. Beautiful. With paintings of the family, and uh, where 
we also use it for for the breakfast for the breakfast yeah because we started in uh, 2013 2012 uh, we started at a bed and breakfast oh, really? uh, business yeah okay. uh, and so we serve the breakfast here here you have the buffet uh -huh. usually you can serve and then you can move to the terrace yeah. and you have the tables for the yeah. breakfast with a nice view on the gardens. Yeah. yeah. And so how many rooms are in the bed and breakfast? It's nine rooms. Nine it's rooms. 18. We can accommodate up to 18. If you're traveling through Tuscany, you have the opportunity for the authentic Tuscan experience in a thousand year old castle. Yeah, well, it's <laughs> a it's an, uh, unique experience, you know, mm -hmm. because you are sleeping in a family house, historic house. So it's not yeah. like staying at uh, hotel and so you also like share the lifestyle of the owners uh, we usually try to build a connection with our guests mm -hmm. like uh, trying to suggest them the best uh, things to do and yeah. try to I mean they they leave us friends yeah. you can say and so help me you know for someone that's watching this kind of put this house in the context of the region I mean we're just 10 or 15 minutes from Siena. It's strange because we, when we started, we thought that this region, were, we thought it would be like very known, mm -hmm. but you know, there is the Valdorcia area, which is pretty famous, and then you have the Chianti area. Mm -hmm. But the, this area in the middle, which is called Creta Sinesi, wasn't known at all. I mean, where a lot of people come here and they don't know that uh, places such as uh, Montalcino exist mm -hmm. or San Galgano mm -hmm. or so there is a lot of uh, places that people discover uh, by coming here. Most of them come for yeah for the wine and uh, for Siena and San Gimignano, you know the most uh, known places mm -hmm. and stuff or thermal baths yeah. and something like that. Yeah. But then they discover that there are there is a lot, a lot more to, to to see and to, yeah. to to do. And to be able to sit here and have breakfast, kind of in you know the kind of the actual authentic family dining room. You know, we were talking about this earlier, la dolce vita. You know, dolce like vita. you know, traveling well uh, and authentically. Uh, this is a much a higher level of experience. You'll be remembered that in Italy, a lunch after a, a, a lunch that is less than two hours is just, is just a quick snack. <laughs> so you need to be comfortable sitting at a table and having limoncello and a starter. I also do my own nocino liquor from walnuts. So yeah. it's uh, yeah, it's, but limoncello, you, you got, it's difficult to uh, compare our limoncello with the real limoncello down in Sorrento yeah. and in the Amalfi Coast where they have beautiful lemons. We have very tough lemons yeah. growing here. But there's a traditional in Tuscany for the villas to grow lemon plants. Mm -hmm. So we also have certain lemon plants that we look yeah. after just because it was probably in the past, very important for the vitamin C, and, and all the villas have lemon trees. Yeah. Very and important. The beautiful terrace. And the beautiful terrace, too. Let me show you something particular a souvenir of the Second World War. This bullet. Mm -hmm. American bullet. Let me take it out of the wall and show you the bullet. You see, this is USA made. <laughs> and this wasn't spoiled, how you say? It wasn't put on time, so it didn't explode. And at the end of the war, they emptied it and they left it as a souvenir of the Second World War in the Castello of San Fabiano. And back he goes, there he goes. This is it. La Lodged into the wall. Yeah, was shot for mistake by an American or American tank because all the tanks were in the fields here in front, parked for a long time, while diplomacy was trying to convince the American not to bomb Siena and the Germans to retreat quickly so that Siena was uh, preserved. Siena was preserved, and it, it did actually work because Siena was really not hardly bombed by the Allies. Yeah, but it didn't second. explode? It did not, because it was a mistake. So they didn't <laughs> There's turn no it fuse. On. Yeah. Ah, thank goodness for uh, those that, fuses. That, yeah, right, right, exactly. <laughs> Things could have been exactly. really different. Yeah. Um, wow, this is beautiful. 
Yeah, this was built by my grandfather, who really likes to smoke cigars. Okay. <laughs> so he wanted a place to smoke cigars in case of rain, he was covered. <laughs> He's a man of my heart. <laughs> yeah. Like, peaceful place to, <laughs> to smoke okay. cigars. Especially he smoked the Toscano cigar that was very smellish, so he had to smoke it outside ah. because my, mo my mother didn't want him to smoke inside. <laughs> well, hopefully that's not my fate as I build my... My new home. <laughs> and this is the garden uh, here. It's called the, the Loggia Garden because mm -hmm. of this Loggia. Yeah. And it's where uh, we also do weddings. We okay. host weddings uh, together with the b, &B uh -huh. uh, business. And this is where uh, it, it is usually used for like the ceremony okay. or the aperitivo. Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah, uh, you have all these like white flowers covered yeah. arches. Yeah. Kirby, you should propose Bianca for the second <laughs> wedding. Ah, yeah. well, she's pushing for a renewal of vows, so yeah, you know, we, the we should put England, France, and Italy all in competition with one another to see uh, where we do this. A competition <laughs> to have Kirby and Bianca yeah. renew the value here. Well, it means that she must allow me back to Italy for more research. <laughs> so you will spend more time with us, so it will be a pleasure having you. Yeah. Well, the countryside is beautiful. I mean, the, the views from here, I mean, of the garden are great. Yeah, if you want to have an amazing view, we have to go up to the tower yeah. and see all the gardens and the landscape from, from there. <laughs> amazing. This is our jewel, because from here you can really have a beautiful 360 degrees view of our marvelous countryside. And also you can really understand why the castle was built in this point, inside this valley, uh, with a very famous river called Arbia that also nominated in the Divine Comedy of Dante Alighieri. Oh, really? And uh, it was one of the places more loved for hunting by the Senese mm. in the past, but also in the modern time. Uh, that's why my family, my father decided to buy it. It was for hunting. Uh, uh, then, after many years, turned up to be better in agriculture, and so we started with the agriculture. But at the beginning, it was really hunting. I mean, it's a beautiful uh, panoramic of all of the Tuscan countryside. Each window is a frame, and, uh, and here really you can appreciate the hills of the Creta Senesi. The first guest we had uh, in uh, when I was a child, my mother started doing a kind of B&B because there wasn't yet a B&B in Italy. And uh, the first guests who came were painters and photographers because in, in springtime and in autumn, the light is marvelous. In this part of the castle, we did host events, especially uh, we did marvelous concerts of quartet concerts, mm -hmm. beautiful because the acoustical it's marvelous. And during you know sunset time with the music it was really very romantic and yeah, this is also yeah. where the, the during weddings the bride and the groom can come up here with the photographer and wow. do some shooting you know with all mm -hmm. the landscape, which is also this area is also where. Uh, they filmed some scenes from The Gladiator, the mm -hmm. movie, yeah. Well, the Tuscan countryside is certainly no secret. I mean, this is what's brought people here, not for, not for centuries, but millennia. Millennia, <laughs> millennia, yeah, right, yeah, right, millennia. Actually, the tower, the big tower, we are on the top of the big tower of the Castello, built with no roof, just because the important thing was making signals, mm -hmm. so with a uh, fire, with a... Uh, mirrors and so the roof was built in the 18th century 
and also the two small little towers were built in the same time. Mm. Then in that century, uh, Siena went through a very hard earthquake, so the two small towers fell, and at, at the end of the 19th century were rebuilt by the Marquis Forteguerri, uh, because it was too important for a family to have a tower in this place. It was really a, uh, how can I say, a symbol of oh, wellness yes. and uh, richness and powerful. Always have been about size, also in the past time. Yeah, right. <laughs> also in the past time, right. <laughs> Always. <laughs> so from here we can see the church. The old church is the oldest part of the castle. It was built in 867. Uh, it was really a pieve, so an important church, and uh, uh, surrounded by a village in that time. Uh, and then the village was walled up in 1300 by the Senese government to create a castle. And, uh, and that's really, uh, there are walls dated, uh, very old, with big stones, uh, the rest has been rebuilt in 1657 mm -hmm. uh, in the church. My parents are buried and so it's for us a secret and a very important place where probably is the most precious place wow. for me and my family. The year 867. 867. It was not built, it was present. Oh, because wow. the okay. documents is an, a notary things where the Count Guinigi gives uh, the Pieve of San Fabiano to the um, Abbey of uh, Fontebona, that is near a place eight kilometers from here, that was a monastery. And his daughter became the chief of the monastery, and so he leads this property of the Pieve and all the land to the monastery. Surely the village was, was much older, yeah. of course. Now, I should say, let us go. We have seen all the beautiful landscape. Now, let us go and have uh, a good uh, taste of Toscan wine and also a good Toscano cigar <laughs> to smoke and relax. That's my favorite. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go for it. Yeah.